Welcome to the Gorilla video series. Now this lesson is actually going to be a little bit different because what I'm going to do is show you all the integration features that we have created in Gorilla with Final Draft. And there's a lot of them, especially with the release of Gorilla Studio 9. We added a few more. So there are actually eight sections to this video and I'm going to go over each one of these sections. The first one is tagging, how to actually tag in Final Draft and in Gorilla. The second one is color coding the script. And in Gorilla, you can see the color coded script, pretty much identical to how you look at it in Final Draft. Now we've had that feature for a while. The third one is editing the screenplay in Gorilla. You can actually edit the screenplay after it is imported into Gorilla from Final Draft. The fourth one, which we just added in Gorilla Studio 9, is the proper positioning of importing locations, sequence, script day, and unit from Final Draft. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The next one is creating shots in Final Draft, which now carry over into Gorilla which is actually a very cool feature because then you can use them in the storyboard module in Gorilla. As an extension to this feature, you can now create shots in the screenplay display and I will show you that. The next one is the scene summary and I will show you how the scene summary created in Final Draft imports into Gorilla. The next one is the ability to export your schedule from Gorilla back into Final Draft if you want to edit the script again. And the last feature is the ability to export your Gorilla schedule into Movie Magic Scheduling via a FDX file export. Okay, so let's get started. For the first feature, I'm going to open up a Final Draft screenplay. And this is in Final Draft 13. And we're going to go into Tags mode. To do that, you go into the production pull-down menu, select Tags Mode. This allows you to tag your screenplay, which preps it for scheduling. And as you can see by the color coding of the certain words and phrases in the script, those are tagged. The different colors represent different categories. In order to do that, now, I'm not going to go too deep into the tagging feature here, but I am going to show you just a little bit of it. So, for example, let's say you wanted to tag the word slurp as a sound. You would highlight it. And since we are in tags mode, you can select the proper category, which in this case is sound. And then you would click tag. Once you do that, you can go back over here. You can see that the word slurp is now in purple, which is the color for sound. And in the navigator, if you go to scene three, you can see that slurp is part of sound. So this is what you can do in Final Draft. And you can then import this screenplay and all the color coded tags that will come into Gorilla. So let's take a look at that. I've already imported this screenplay into Gorilla here. In order to do that, you just click on this plus button down here and select Import Screenplay. You can see that the FDX file is one of the formats that Gorilla accepts. And I'm going to launch the schedule real quick to go into it. We are now in scene one. And you can see that the screenplay came in tagged. So if I go back to the screenplay here, just to compare, you can see that we glide over plush Beverly Hills and all this comes into Gorilla here. Now this is a feature that we've had for a while. And I'm also going to make some comparisons to other scheduling programs in this video. This is already not a feature available in Movie Magic Scheduling. You cannot import a FDX file from Final Draft properly and bring in the action and the dialogue like this. Let me go to a scene here that has some dialogue. Here we go. 
scene five as an example. If I click on scene five in the scene navigator, you can see that scene five comes in, chubby, the phone still to his ear. Here's the character name and the dialogue. And of course the action and even the transition comes in. And of course the tagging, huge fat of gazpacho, huge fat of gazpacho, mama, chubby, it all comes in. Now the highlighting in purple, I'm going to explain that in another feature in a bit. That's the location tagging. So this is the first and second features that the script comes into Gorilla tagged and color coded. Now tagging in Gorilla is similar. Remember, I tagged the word slurp in Final Draft as a sound. Now I did that in Final Draft after I imported the screenplay. So let me now tag it in Gorilla. So let's go to scene three and do the same thing. In scene three, if I click on it, slurp down here will not be tagged. So just to show you how this works, let's go ahead and tag this in Gorilla. We can go ahead and double click the word or the phrase that you want to tag. And in Gorilla, you tap the space bar. Now you can't see me do that, but I tapped the space bar on the keyboard. I can then select a category. In this instance, I'm going to select sound. And here it shows you the elements that are already tagged as sound. And then select the tag button. And here we go. Slurp is now tagged. And you can see up here, Slurp is now in the scheduled elements for scene three. So again, this is really a very nice integration between Final Draft and Gorilla, where you can bring in the screenplay, action, the dialogue, the characters, and you can tag very similarly how you can tag in Final Draft. Okay, let's move on to the next feature, and that is editing the screenplay. If you click out of tagging mode, this is tagging mode. When you click outside of the box, you will see a few buttons down here, one of which is a pen icon, and the tooltip is edit screenplay. And this is a feature very unique to Gorilla. Since Movie Magic Scheduling does not have the screenplay display at all, obviously, by extension, this is a feature that Movie Magic Scheduling does not have. So you can click on the edit screenplay button and another window will pop up with your screenplay broken down into lines. And each line is displayed as either scene heading or action or character as it is here in Final Draft. When you create your screenplay in Final Draft, you want to specify what format each line is. Now these are all action lines. There is no dialogue here. Well, we are in tags mode, but here the same thing. There is no dialogue here because there is no dialogue here. But let's say, for example, you want to modify a line, add a line. You can even add a character and some dialogue here to the scene. You don't have to go back to the screenplay to do that. I mean, you can, nothing is stopping you from doing that, but that information would not transfer to Gorilla because we already imported the script. This is another option that you can use to sync or modify the screenplay display to match up to a modified screenplay. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's say, for example, well, this is tags mode, so let me get out of tags mode because we can't edit the screenplay. Let me add a line here. For example, this is a new line and we can see a cat and a dog. Now, I did that specifically so I can highlight those words in Gorilla, not in Final Draft. I'm going to copy this line, and I'm going to add it here. I'm going to click this Insert button. This is already set to Action, as you can see. And select Edit, Paste Text Only, and then click on Write. And here is the line. And if I close the window, the edit screenplay window, here is the new line with a cat and a dog. 
Now, if I go into tagging mode and highlight cat and select animals and tag and do the same thing with dog, we can see now that cat and dog are now elements for this particular scene. Now, they are not tagged here in Final Draft. You can certainly do that, but it's not really necessary because we've done that in Gorilla, and this is where it matters in your schedule. So this Edit Screenplay feature is really a nice addition that allows you to edit any scene, of course. Now let's go to Scene 7, for example, and click on Edit. Actually, let me see if I can find a scene with some dialogue. Oh, here we go. Here's a lot of dialogue. Scene 11. Okay, Amanda, Barney, etc. If I click on the Edit button and I wanted to modify the dialogue, I could click on the Insert button. But you don't want to do two separate lines of dialogue. It's best to click the existing line of dialogue and add to that. So add some dialogue here. OK, and click on Write. And you can see just a little bit of it here because this is just the editor. This is not the format of how it's going to look. But if I close this, you can see that the added line appears here. So you can see how you can actually edit the screenplay in Gorilla. Again, you are not going to find this in most other scheduling programs. <laughs> Certainly not Movie Magic Scheduling, because they cannot even import the FDX file properly to be able to get any of the action or the dialogue in the schedule. Let's move on now to the next feature, and this is something that we added in Gorilla Studio 9, and this is called Locations, Sequence, Unit, and Script Day. So let me go back here to the final draft screenplay and turn on Tags Mode and go back to the very first scene here. And you can see many of the slug lines or scene headings are color coded. Scene 3 is purple. Scene 4 is purple. Now this happens to be green, but what this is indicating is that there is a green tagged element in scene 1 here in the Tags panel of the Navigator. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this feature, but it happens to be this one here, Rich Lady Walking Poodle, which is a background actor. And that is why that is highlighted in green, because the background actor is the green color. So when the scene heading is color-coded, it means that something is tagged to the scene that is not in the screenplay display. So, for example, if you click on Location, you can see this in scene one. Rodeo Drive was tagged as a location. Now, this was done in Final Draft in this window, in the Navigator window. It was not done in the screenplay display by on-screen tagging. Same thing with Unit. If I click on Unit, I will see First Unit over there. And same thing with Sequence, Exteriors. And finally, the same thing with Script Day which is one for this scene. Now, all this information will now import into Gorilla in the proper place. Now, what does that mean? So let me go into scene one. Let me move this so I can see this window. There's a lot of windows open here, but we'll make it work. So the very first one is Rodeo Drive. Look over here. Location is where this popped in. Rodeo Drive came in because it was tagged as a location in Final Draft. And if I click on the Location field here in Gorilla, you're going to see all the locations imported from Final Draft. I did not enter these locations in Gorilla. I entered them in Final Draft. So if I go to Scene 2, for example, here is Studio A, Barney's da-da-da-da. It's probably this one right here, Basement. If I go to Scene 8, it will probably be another location. Here we go. No location slash CGI. And that shows up right here. No location slash CGI. In addition, all these locations are now automatically created in the locations module because we have in Gorilla a whole locations module that, again, many of the scheduling programs do not have, including Movie Magic. Movie Magic Scheduling only has a single text field here. 
and this will import into that field. But Gorilla has an entire locations module where you can enter facts about that location, photos of that location, budget for that location, and much, much more. And also, first unit populates here. And here, all the units from all the scenes are shown. Sequence populates here. And script day populates here. For this next feature, I'm going to actually open up a different screenplay. And this is a very simple script with just three scenes in it. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because this screenplay has certain lines tagged as shot instead of action. So if I were to select this line here, you can see that up here, this is an action line. And if I click in here, this is a scene heading in Final Draft. One of the fairly new features is the option to tag a line as a shot. So, for example, aerial shot a large eagle is tagged as a shot. Now, it might look exactly like an action line, but it is indeed a shot. And I will show you why that is important after we import this script into Gorilla. And down here, close up of little kid. Again, this is a shot too. Again, the only way to really know is to click in the field and to look up here. Medium shot, MS colon fishing pole, also shot, and long shot, and wide shot. So if you do use the shot feature in Final Draft, Gorilla now, with the release of Gorilla Studio 9, can import these lines as shots. So I actually did load the schedule here of this particular screenplay. It has three scenes, as you can see. Now, Gorilla will highlight shots in brown. You can change that color too if you want, and I'll show you how to do that. If I go to scene two, here are these three shots, mimicking these three shots in the screenplay. And of course, scene three, we have the wide shot campfire. Now, why is that important? I'm going to show you. I'm going to go back to scene one and click on the edit screenplay button. And notice here, aerial shot, a large eagle. But notice here that the element is tagged as a shot, not as an action line. If I were to click on aerial shot, there is a little bit of a different window here. You have up here a shot type field, which is new. Now this is a gorilla feature, it is not a final draft feature. You cannot specify shot types in final draft, but after you import them into gorilla, you can specify each shot as a shot type. And notice here that shot is highlighted. So if I were to go here and select aerial shot, because that's what this says this is, right? And click on right, and then close this. Now I'm going to do the same thing with scene two. This shot here says very clearly close up. So I will select close up. And down here is the shot color. So you could change that, but I'll leave it selected as brown. And you can set the shot type in caps if you want. And this is an MS, which stands for medium shot. And you can see here that there are plenty of shot types to choose from. And we're going to go down here to the long shot. And very quickly, I will do scene three and I will speed up the video so it goes really quick. Now that all the shot types are specified, you can create a storyboard based on these shots by clicking on the storyboard button. And notice this option here, you can create a shot setup by scene, which is what I'm going to select, or you could do it by shoot date. But if you select by scene, this will import these shots from the screenplay as noted here. Here are the shot setups that came in, one for each scene. And if I click on scene one, you can see that the aerial shot comes in. This here was imported from Final Draft, and we specified the shot type in Gorilla. And as you can see that a picture came in, this is just a sample picture that was attached to this shot type. You can edit it and change the image if you want by importing a custom image. 
You can then enter a start time and an end time for the shot, the status of the shot. Now let's go to scene two, and you will see the three shots that were created in final draft. Close up, medium shot, long shot. Again, you can change the image if you want. But you can now print a shot list from Gorilla and enter very specific information about each shot. So this is a really nice feature that we added in Gorilla 9 that integrates shots from Final Draft into Gorilla Scheduling and then directly into the Storyboard module. And once again, you will not see this feature at all. In Movie Magic Scheduling, they don't even have a storyboard or a shot module. Okay, let's move on now to the next feature, which is, now I'm going to actually go back to the first schedule, and that feature is importing the scene summary from Final Draft. In Final Draft 13, the scene summary is now displayed underneath the scene heading. Now, if you wanted to add a scene summary to a scene in Final Draft, you would go into the navigator, and you can see right here, if you click on it, you can add a line here. And of course, you can do that for any scene that you want. I've just done it for scene one. Now, this information will import into Gorilla. In Gorilla, if you click on the Summary tab, you will see this is a sample summary imported from Final Draft into Gorilla. And that is exactly where this came from. Now, you can add a lot more information here if you want. You have all this room here, so you can go ahead and enter as long as a summary as you want. You can go on and on and on. You can copy and paste a whole bunch of text. Now, there's one caveat to this feature, and that is it only imports one line from Final Draft. If you're going to use this feature, it has to be just one line entered here. No paragraph returns. Now, the line can be as long as you want. You just can't enter a paragraph return in the summary field in Final Draft. Once it is in Gorilla, you can add as many lines as you want. This is another unique feature you will not find in Movie Magic Scheduling. Okay, the next feature, which is really cool, is the ability to export your schedule from Gorilla after you've imported it in from Final Draft and added elements and possibly even edited the screenplay back into Final Draft. Now that might sound a little confusing, but let's say if we go to Breakdown Sheets and go to Scene 3, where we added Cat Dog. Now I did go ahead and add that in Scene 3, but let's say I added some more information here and even tagged it. Now I did not do that here. We can, if you wanted to have an updated screenplay, you can now export your schedule back to Final Draft. So let's go ahead and I will show you how to do that. I'm going to click on the Manager button. I'm going to then click on the three dots which enable me to save the schedule. Click on Documents. And there is an option down here that says Export to Final Draft or Movie Magic Scheduling. And that's actually the very next feature that I'm going to show you. So if I click this and click Save, now I'm going to bypass this because I've already done it. What's going to happen, it will export your schedule onto the desktop as an FDX file. Now, I renamed it Exported from Gorilla. It will name the file the name of the schedule specified in Gorilla. And if I now open this with Final Draft, and I can actually compare it with the original. This is the original right here. I can even go into Tags mode, and you can see that all the scene headings are tagged. Now, it's not tagged on screen as it was here, but all the elements are indeed tagged to the scene. I know that because if I go into the navigator and select the Tags button for this one, and here we go. This is all the information that was tagged. So if I click on Scene 2, this is all the information that was tagged in Final Draft initially and then added in Gorilla. This is another unique feature you will not find in Movie Magic Scheduling. Okay. The last feature I want to show you is this one right here, which is the same check mark, but this time we're going to select Movie Magic Scheduling. 
Now, when I do this, and I'm going to select Save, I'm going to do this right now, it creates pretty much the same file, except it doesn't have any of the action, character, or dialogue because it is not needed. This time, I'm going to select this option, Export FDX for Movie Magic Scheduling. Now, this also creates an FDX file. This file you can now open in Final Draft. And you can see that this file does not have any action, character, dialogue, or transitions. All it has are the scene headings. And since they are color-coded, if you go into the navigator and select Tags, you can see that all the scenes are tagged. They are tagged to a scene heading. Remember, you can do that in Final Draft. So this is what exports. Why? Because Movie Magic Scheduling does not import the action and the dialogue. It is not needed. But what is needed are the elements. The last step is to export this file to the .sex file format because, again, Movie Magic Scheduling does not support Final Draft's fdx file. Select File, then Export, then Script, and then select the sex file. I will put it on my desktop. Select Save. And now, if I hide everything, here is, it just looks like a blank file, but this is now an sex file, not an fdx file, which you can import into Movie Magic Scheduling, both Movie Magic Scheduling 6, the older legacy version, or Movie Magic Scheduling 10. So those are all the wonderful features we have in Gorilla that work specifically with Final Draft. Thanks for watching.